So Jamie, with all your years of being an outdoor survivalist, have you ever had to start a fire without matches? Yeah. Would you like to go into yeah. that? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've done the typical thing with the, uh, the sticks, you know, the string and the bow, and you rotate it until you build up a coal. It's, uh, it's pretty tricky, but I've done it. Well, that's one we're going to try. We're going to try a few more to see if we could start a fire without using matches. One, we're going to polish the bottom of a soda can with chocolate, see if we can use it like a mirror. We're going to use uh, steel wool and a battery. We're going to see if we can start a fire with a bullet. And the last one is see if we can start a fire with ice. Well, that one I'd like to see. He'll get his wish, but first on the chopping block, it's the classic fire starting technique. So can our bright sparks pit their wits and light their fire. Obviously, you can't just take any two pieces of wood and start rubbing them together and get fire, so. I thought that was the idea. Well, there's gonna be a little bit of preparation. Gasoline, gunpowder. Unfortunately, like Tom Hanks in Castaway, they've got nothing but wood, elbow grease, and a dim and distant memory of their cave-dwelling ancestry. Ready to give it a try? I give it a shot, but this one, you're being very optimistic with this one. Okay. Carrie's normal enthusiasm has already been extinguished. It is just as much fun as it looks. <sighs> you know, if you don't get this lit, we're going to vote you off the island. Any scouts watching might want to look away. This ain't pretty. Oh, snaky. Seems like he's off the island, too. <sighs> yeah, I'm getting smoked, but I'm not getting any embers. Oh, my arms are so tired. I think we're all gonna die. With things looking grim for our castaways, they decide to boost their chances with some primitive technology. This is definitely it. Hey, I got the I got the bow working. Yeah. Oh. Oh. There's a lot to coordinate here. This is like this is like skiing or something. <laughs> Grant slips into hysteria, the first <laughs> stages of Desert Island Madness. Okay. Desperate measures are called for, like a power drill, which Carrie claims to have found in the wreckage. Oh, I'm seeing some black. I see smoke. Oh, it's smoking. So that's as fast as we have to get it going. <laughs> they seem to be busting the myth that where there's smoke, there's fire. She's getting black wood. She's getting smoke, and we're still not getting an ember. Even with modern technology, Ugh. our Mythbusters are looking like a bunch of fire retardants. I need a battery change on this. <laughs> <laughs> While Carrie and Tori fail at cheating, Grant stays true to the myth with a prehistoric hand drill. What the hell is that? Hey, they laughed at, um... Galileo, too. <laughs> it's perhaps worth remembering at this point that Neanderthals had fire making whipped <laughs> over a hundred thousand years ago. Oh, geez, you feel the heat coming from that? Uh, well, our hapless hominids are stuck between a rock and a hard place. All right. You know, maybe we should be building a raft or something. So, how's Tom Hanks doing? <laughs> Through a process of trial and error, Necessity at last gives birth to invention. <laughs> when Tom's Tinder catches flame, his celebration resonates across a million years of mankind. Fire! The very hardest part about all this is we know it's not a myth. We know you can make fire while rubbing two sticks together. It's, it's been proven over and over. It's just that we really suck at it. And because they suck at it, they keep cheating. Under F for fire. <laughs> or how about G for gunpowder? Would you call using gunpowder cheating? Look, we got fire! fire. Woo! Look at that! All it took was rubbing two sticks together. It worked. Fantastic. Wow, what a result. It's fair to say they're not setting the world on fire. He'll be coming around. So, starving and beaten, oh, they call in an expert and venture into the untamed wilderness of the car park. You ought to be able, from start to finish, to get fire in anywhere between 10 and 30 minutes, depending on what you have. 
According to survival expert Peter Wolf, Grant was on the right track with his bow. I want to use my full drill. You see that dark dust forming? Yeah. I want that hole as big around as my drill. For Tinder, the Wolfman favors the yucca leaf. Fibers. Now I'm going to use a nice large bundle here. Yes, you don't want to catch your fibers while you're right in the middle of making a nice coal. Mm. See how straight the bow is? Yeah. You want to keep it level, keep your string in the middle. Use the whole bow. What the heck? Dude, nice job. This next one um, I'm excited about. We're going to try to light a fire with a bullet. And the idea here is to pull the bullet out of the casing, empty the gunpowder into your kindling, put the empty shell back in the gun, and shooting at the gunpowder, igniting it and igniting your kindling. The key to this neat idea is the firing cap at the bottom of the cartridge. Normally, it ignites the gunpowder, which fires the bullet from the shell. According to this myth, to start a fire, just remove the bullet, pour out the gunpowder, and use the firing cap as a fire lighter. With nine bullets in a clip, theoretically, they'd have up to nine shots at starting a fire. They collect gunpowder from nine bullets and head for the Mythbusters blast chamber, where they use up all nine lives. These cats are going to have to think again. Do you have any more ideas up your sleeve? It seems kind of funny not being able to light gunpowder. I mean, it's so flammable and all. You'd think it'd be a snap. But, you know, here on Mythbusters, we find, we find ways of making easy things hard. The problem is that the firing cap won't ignite the gunpowder unless it's compressed by a bullet. When you have the bullet compressing the gunpowder up against that cap, then you have that connection. Otherwise, if there's no bullet, the cap just blows the gunpowder out like confetti. So they decide to recalibrate the myth with a rifle, a bullet, and some cloth. Hopefully, since there's more gunpowder in the round, It'll ignite the, the cloth, and we'll have a burning ember shoot out of the barrel. And we won't have all of our gunpowder just blown away. With any luck, the wad of cloth will compress the gunpowder sufficiently to achieve ignition. All right, so that's packed tight in there. Holy. <laughs> nope. With the prospect of raw fish for dinner again, Carrie urges a radical rethink. Maybe it's time to start replicating the results and actually yeah. just make it happen instead of trying to make it happen the way the myth says. Tori suspects that the black powder used in old-fashioned muskets is more flammable than the smokeless gunpowder in modern bullets. So he quickly sets up an experiment. This is the black powder. This is the smokeless powder. OK. Oh, quick. Slow. So that's why I think it benefits us to go with the black powder. I don't know. It looked to me like the smoke list was on longer. It seems like that should be better for us. But did you see how easy it was to ignite the black powder? If it's easier to ignite the black powder, we're going to get a better chance of igniting our, uh, our cotton. It ignites faster, like that. So take one musket and a measure of black powder. Then ram home a wad of cotton. Finally, add a firing cap and cross your fingers. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> At last, fire in the hole takes on real meaning. That's it. Yeah! yeah.